California faces a perplexing challenge with its water situation, grappling with the severe drought and significant flooding simultaneously. This video delves into this unusual predicament and explores a multi-billion dollar mega dam project intended to address it. Before we dive in, let's first understand the water situation in California. Water has never been abundant in California. Many regions within the state are classified as deserts, including the Great Basin, Mojave, and Colorado areas. Even when American settlers first arrived in California centuries ago, they struggled to cultivate the land due to the scarcity of water. Fast forward to October 2021, when the governor declared a statewide drought emergency, urging citizens to reduce their water usage by 15%. However, as of 2023, nearly 18 months later, the emergency declaration remains in place. California has been officially in drought conditions for over a thousand days. However, this is only one facet of the problem. In the midst of this prolonged drought, California experienced a period of exceptionally heavy rainfall that triggered major floods in some areas. Towns and cities suffered damage, lives were lost, and yet another state of emergency was declared by the governor. Currently, California faces the dual crises of drought and flood simultaneously. But how can one state grapple with two opposing states of emergencies concurrently? It all boils down to water management. When intense rainfall occurs, a substantial volume of water inundates the region, causing floods. Unfortunately, only a fraction of this water is effectively collected and stored. Once the sun re-emerges, much of the water either drains away or floods into the area, and droughts persist as if the rain never happened. This situation is akin to filling a bathtub that continues to drain if the plug isn't sealed. California has caught in a cycle of fluctuating between too much water and too little water without the capacity to capture and store efficient water during rainy periods to compensate for the ensuing droughts. The central question is whether California can find a solution to this challenging water dilemma. Efforts have been made in the past, including similar situations in the 1950s, but the same issue persists. So, can California effectively address this complex water problem? Amidst a backdrop of frequent droughts and floods occurring rapidly in California, the state recognized the need for a solution and initiated the State Water Project, often referred to as the SWP. The primary objective of this project was straightforward, devise a method to store water during periods of excess rainfall for later use during droughts. In its initial stages, the SWP embarked on constructing over 20 dams, facilitating the collection of water in vast reservoirs during heavy rainfall episodes. Perhaps the most renowned of these reservoirs is Lake Oroville, situated between the Oroville Dam, which stands as the largest dam in the United States, towering over 200 meters in height and containing hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. Another notable example is Pyramid Lake, located just outside of Los Angeles. When drought conditions prevail, the water amassed in these colossal reservoirs can be distributed to farms and cities, forming an intricate process reliant on an extensive network of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some of the water traverses hundreds of kilometers, even crossing mountain ranges. A prominent feature of this system is the California Aqueduct, which transports water from the Sierra Nevada all the way to Los Angeles, branching off to serve millions of people in its path. Notably, the Edmonston pumping plant must hoist the water over the Tehatapachi Mountains, ascending a height of 600 meters, an analogy likened to pumping a river over the One World Trade Center. Remarkably, no other pumping facility worldwide elevates water to greater heights than the Edmonston. Overall, the SWP stands as one of the world's most advanced and ambitious water management systems. However, during its construction in the 1960s and 70s, it was envisioned solely as stage one. There were intentions to build additional dams and canals in the 80s and 90s, but various factors, primarily economic challenges and environmental concerns, led to the postponement of these projects. The water facilities disrupted the natural flow of rivers, impacting local species significantly. Salmon and steelhead trout populations, for instance, which undertake upriver migrations during breeding seasons, experienced severe declines due to the SWP. The dams and pumping stations obstructed these fish from reaching their breeding grounds. Consequently, California decided to halt the next phase of the construction, canceling Stage 2 and pin its hopes in the initial set of projects to fulfill their objectives. Initially, these new facilities made a noticeable difference. Approximately two-thirds of the water collected by the water system was allocated to urban areas, while the remainder irrigated orchards and farms. The entire system was estimated to contribute around $400 billion annually to the statewide economy. However, in recent years, the existing components of the state water project have begun to grapple with challenges. With these elements initially constructed, California's population numbered fewer than 20 million people. Yet over the past few decades, the state's population has doubled, resulting in corresponding surges in water demand. 
The dams and canals are now struggling to keep pace with this increased demand. This is partially why California has been grappling with recent drought-related challenges. In the words of Mike Wade, the executive director of the California Farm Water Coalition, our water demands have increased far beyond what the system was designed to support. Furthermore, the impact of climate change exacerbates the situation. Over the past century, California has witnessed an average temperature rise of nearly 2 degrees Celsius, leading to a severe and prolonged heat waves. With worsening droughts, a growing population, and an aging water management infrastructure, the state urgently requires an upgrade. This is precisely why California has made the decision to undertake the site's reservoir project. Located a few kilometers north of Sacramento, this endeavor aims to transform a narrow valley with cliffs and hills into a lake. The project's goal, as described on its website, is to create an environmentally beneficial off-river reservoir that will capture excess water for major storms and save it for drier periods. This concept has been into consideration since the 1950s, nearly included in Stage 1 of California's water management project. However, due to the ambitious nature and the substantial cost of $4 billion, it was deferred in favor of other projects, such as the colossal Oroville Dam. In the recent years, California has had a change of heart, deeming the site's reservoir project worth the investment. While it may not necessarily solve the state's drought issues, it promises significant assistance. The reservoir has the capacity to store over 2 cubic kilometers of water, enough to provide a year's worth of drinking water for hundreds of thousands of Californian households. To construct this reservoir, workers will commence by building several dams to seal the gaps between the valley's hills. The primary dams, the Sites Dam and the Golden Gate Dam, will be situated on the eastern side of the valley, with additional dams to the north. Collectively, these dams will transform the valley into a watertight basin. The reservoir will be filled by diverting water from the Sacramento River, located approximately 25 kilometers to the east during rainy periods. A network of pipes will transport this water across fields, hills, and towns, filling the Sites Valley like a colossal water reservoir. During dry seasons, water can be released from the reservoir to alleviate nearby areas, although pumping water from the river to the valley demands a substantial amount of energy. The SWP believes the benefits outweigh the cost, especially since approximately 80% of the energy required for pumping those can be generated by hydroelectric generators during water release. Construction is slated to commence in 2024, now or at the latest 2025, with completion expected six years later in 2030 or 2031. Some individuals express frustration that the projects won't be operational sooner, as demonstrated by missed opportunities during the floods that struck California in early 2023. The site's reservoir has captured and stored this flood water, supplying more than 200,000 Californian households for the rest of the year, according to Jerry Brown, executive director of the site's project authority. Nonetheless, there are potential drawbacks to consider. To finance the project, the SWP may need to increase water prices, with concerns arising about the possibility of a 300% hike. Although it remains uncertain whether such an increase will occur, it's a significant cause for concern. Environmental groups have also raised questions about the project's impact on migrating fish in the Sacramento River. Unlike conventional dams that obstruct entire rivers, the site's project, being an off-stream reservoir, won't block the Sacramento River. Its primary impact will be the energy-intensive pumps, which will be equipped with advanced fish screens to prevent aquatic species from being drawn in. The SWP has additionally commented to using some of the water stored in the site's reservoir to support local wildlife, particularly fish species that require deep, cold pools for breeding. During dry seasons, this water will help maintain suitable conditions for breeding, reflecting a broader commitment to assisting both humans and the environment. While there is still a chance that this project may not materialize due to insufficient funding, as of now, it appears that the reservoir will be operational by 2030. Do you believe this is a valuable addition to California's water infrastructure? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about the state water project, consider watching our video about the Oroville Dam. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to the next video.